Hey, how you doing? Um, this is going to be called What is Globiolus? Um, <clears throat> it's a detailing of the Globert's claim of what they, they tried to term as the Coriolis effect, but it is not. Um, it is anything but. Um, it is Globiolus. <clears throat> okay, I wanted to add some visuals to this, but I want to keep it as short as possible and concise as possible. And there's a good bit of reading here, so I'm hoping that the text will the uh, <clears throat> will uh, explain and uh, detail the whole lot, and that it doesn't draw uh, drawn on too long. Um, <clears throat> I might have to fix uh, the odd spelling here and there um, along the way, so and I might have to get a sip of water because it's a good bit of reading. Um, so uh, please excuse that, <clears throat> but hopefully it will be over pretty quick. Okay, let's get started. What is Globiolus? Globiolus is a claimed actual deflection of an object in the inertial reference frame caused by a mutated version of the conserv conservation of angular momentum being measured in miles per hour. The globe's claim is that an object will retain the miles per hour momentum of the latitude where it originally left the surface of the globe earth. So what does this actually mean? <clears throat> This means that if an object leaves the surface of the globe earth at the equator and proceeds to travel north, then because of the latitudes north or south of the equator on the globe earth being less in distance around the surface of the globe earth, or sorry, of the globe, uh, at that latitude in miles or kilometers than the globe's equator line is, then it is equated that the object will re retain a faster angular momentum rate because it started out at a location with a technically bigger circumference at its starting latitude. And this leads to the claim that once the object moves in a straight line, north or south of the equator line, that it will be moving at a faster angular rate than all other latitudes. And this supposed faster angular rate will cause an actual deviation of the object in the inertial reference frame in respect to the rotating globe earth underneath it or non-inertial reference frame. But there are several glaring issues with this as I will detail. <clears throat> One, the first one, angular momentum is not measured in miles per hour, as the angular momentum of a, of a rotating body is equal throughout the whole of that rotating body, and it does not change with attitude or position. If a point on the equator is in line with a point 30 degrees north or south of it on a globe earth, then both points will hold equal angular rate as they both are moving in tandem with each other, and not at two different Lang angular speeds. So if an object retains and conserves the angular momentum of either point, whether at the equator line or 30 degrees north or south, then the conservation of angular momentum will be equal as those two chosen points are not moving at two separate angular rates, as that would mean that they are rotating at opposing speeds and this would be an impossibility as they will both complete a full 360 degree revolution at the exact same time. So any claim otherwise would mean that the equator line on the globe earth is actually moving faster than every other part of the globe earth, north and south. But this is not reality as we know that all parts of a solid rotating body will invariably move at equal angular rates to one another. <clears throat> because it is one solid object and not several parts semi-connected to each other through some central, sta central stainless steel column. <clears throat> okay, two, let's get a sip of water here. <clears throat> okay, um, Globiolus <clears throat> involves a claimed actual deviation, but if the object in that narrative is moving in a straight line, north or south from the equator line region, and it is then claimed to reach a chosen location north or south, before the rest of the globe earth can catch up with it, then not only where is this claim deviation that should be there that they're claiming, as the object in that scenario did not stray from a straight path, but also how did the globe earth underneath it slow down, as all points on a solid ro ro rotating body, which the globe earth is claimed to be, are moving at an equal angular rate and velocity. So for this claim to make any sense whatsoever, then the object would have to deviate from a straight path or the globe earth would have to have semi-connected parts that all move at different angular velocities. And this would mean that different parts of the globe earth that would normally be in line with each other, in reality, 
would have to complete a full 360 degree rotation at different differing times. But we know that this is not the case, as not only is the globe air claimed to be one solid rotating body, with the exception of water, that moves around in a circular motion at 15 degrees per hour, giving us a sunrise and sunset daily, and completing a full 360 degree rotation every 24 hours. But the object in this instance that is said to leave the equator line is claimed to not deviate from straight, but instead it is claimed that the other parts of the globe out north and south of the equator are actually moving slower than, than their corresponding parts on the said equator line of the globe out. So even the claimed actual deviation does not happen in this instance, as the claim very clearly states that different parts of a solid rotating body are moving at different angular rates and velocities, yet they all stay in line with each other, north and south, and all complete a full 360 degree rotation daily at exactly the same time. 3. <clears throat> the conservation of angular momentum in this claim of Globiolus is not only measured in differing miles per hour, but is also claimed that this concern, conserved momentum is a continual thing as it is claimed that all of the globe's atmosphere and every object within its atmosphere, i.e. airplanes, helicopters, drones, hot air balloons, sports, bo sports balls, etc., are all claimed to retain the uh, globe or its angular momentum constantly and continually without fail or exception. But in reality, the conservation of angular momentum is not a continual thing, but a momentary thing, as you will not retain the angular momentum of a solid rotating body continu continually. So you cannot rotate on a children's roundabout and then use a jetpack to lift yourself two foot off of the surface of the roundabout and expect to continually retain the angular momentum of the roundabout. It will invariably spin underneath you as you cannot continually conserve or retain the angular momentum of any rotating body regardless of its size. It is a physics impossibility. So the mainstream globe <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. So the mainstream globe out claim that all objects not attached to the globe out or its surface will continue, continually retain its angular momentum as long as they are within the globe out's atmosphere, which is also claimed to be conserving the angular momentum of said globe out, must be by proxy a false claim, as we know that in reality this does not happen. 4. <clears throat> the historical or origins of the globiolus force also <laughs> falsifies all claims made concerning it. As the original claim made by Globert proponents was that the proof that the Globert was real and rotated was that there was a visible Coriolis effect involving the solid earth. But some decades ago it was pointed out to mainstream science that this was not true and no apparent deviation was observed by anyone looking up into the claimed inertial reference frame from a claimed non-inertial reference frame at objects either stationary or moving in a linear path, as there would be an apparent deviation of these objects if the earth was rotating. So once it was pointed out to mainstream science that we do not observe the Coriolis effect like we should if we were on a rotating body, they proceeded to make the decision to disown any notion of us being the geocentric as all the evidence showed it to be and create the Globiolis effect through the manipulation and mutation of both the conservation of angular momentum and the Coriolis effect. What they did was to start measuring the conservation of angular momentum in differing miles per hour, depending on a person's latitude, and then claim that an object moving north or south would only conserve the angular momentum of their starting latitude circumference distance in miles per hour, and either be moving faster or slower than the other latitudes the object will be encountering. While moving in a straight linear path, travelling either towards or away from the globe or its equator line, and this in turn would create a claimed actual deviation, as long as it could be asserted that the globe or its latitudes were moving at different angular velocities, even though angular velocity is measured in radians per second, which states very clearly that all latitudes on the globe or are moving at an equal uniform rate throughout, as radians are part of a circle and all parts of the solid globe out are moving at the exact same rate, as all longitude lines and points on them will complete a 360 degree rotation every 24 hours without fail in that model and belief. So the actual model and belief in it dispels all notion that globiolus could happen and exist, so even non-reality, which is the globe out model, disproves the royal claims made about the said, the said globiolus force 
as angular velocity and the conservation of angular momentum is always equal throughout a solid rotating body and the conservation of angular momentum is not a continual thing but more a fleeting momentary thing that has a lifespan of its own and moreover different parts of a claimed solid rotating body will not move at different miles per hour calculated rates as angular velocity and the conser conserving of the momentum of this velocity cannot be measured in differing miles per hour segments just to support a narrative belief system or preferred worldview. So in conclusion, all and any claims made by a person that Globiolus is factual and a real possibility, even without, even within a fantastical mathematical model like the Globe model is, actually just that person stating, sorry, is just that, sorry, uh, sorry, I just want to read that part again. So, made by a person that, uh, I'm going to go back to it. So, in conclusion, all and any claims made by a person that Globiolus is, is, is factual and a real possibility, even within a fantastical mathematical model, like the Globert model, is actually just that person stating that, that very sternly that they are, without a doubt, an unbelievable clown and should, be not, should, should not be taken seriously at any point in history. Either that or the person is straight out admitting to dishonesty, so should be held in contempt and treated with distrust at all times. So one more time, I'm just going to read the very end part. So in conclusion, all and any claims, this is important, made by a person that Globiolus is actual and real, a uh, real possibility, even within a fantastical mathematical model, like the Globert model, is actually just that person stating very sternly that they are without doubt an unbelievable clown and should be taken very, should not be taken seriously at any point in history. Either that or the person is straight out admitting to dishonesty, so should be held in contempt and treated with distrust at all times. Thank you. Please, please like, comment and uh, uh, subscribe. Bye.